Hello friends. This is Wakeman. Today I share with you a message to bring you hope, to focus on your recovery process. Remember that narcissists hate you, because they see in you all they will never be. Therefore their plan for your life, is to steal, kill, and destroy you. When you wake up to all the deceptions narcissists produce in this world, and their task to snatch souls for Satan, the first narcissist, you become familiar with the tactics used by them, to steal your healing and recovery. Narcissists want to steal your recovery. They want you to live in fear. Narcissists don't want to rob us of our faith, they want our faith to be in anything but God. They want you to feel insecure. Don't let narcissists tell you that you are in love, or not good enough. They want you to be led astray. Watch out for disinformation. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are covert narcissists. They want you to fail. Narcissists want to destroy us. They want us to settle, for what the world has given us, and to accept our losses. The recovery path, has shown us to be awakened, and be consciously watching out for the schemes of narcissists, who are looking to destroy our lives, keeping us away, from the recovery path, and in a relationship with Jesus. You can stand your ground, and defeat the enemy. God has already given you, everything you need to fight back, to resist the enemy, and his lies. You just need to put on the full armor of God, and use the weapons he's given you. Reject anything that doesn't look like what God said. Were you listening to the enemy's voice of defeat, or to God's voice of victory? Keep the word in your heart, and take every thought captive. Cast down every thought, that doesn't match what God said, and every lying spirit. Exercise your spiritual authority. Stand boldly on the promise, that God is for you, and no one, and no thing, can stand against you. Stay that course. Don't let discouragement set in. Persevere with the word. Stay on guard. The enemy will not give up his efforts. He will keep trying to steal your promises, but God is always faithful. God and his word, are more powerful than any fiery darts the enemy can possibly send your way. Don't let the enemy convince you, that you can't recover from past mistakes. God wants to see you get back up, and fight, and so do I. Discover who you are in Christ, and what you and God, can do together. I'm including two sermons, that I hope will inspire, and energize you, to not let the enemy steal your recovery. God bless you. Please, remember. Truth, is freedom. A few weeks ago there was an event here, at Dodger Stadium with Joel Osteen. 35,000 people at Dodger Stadium, something like that. Um, he is now the largest quote-unquote church, uh, I'm using the word loosely, in America, down in Houston. Um, you need to understand that he is a pagan religionist in every sense. He's a quasi-pantheist. Jesus is a footnote that satisfies his critics and deceives his followers. The idea of his whole thing is that men have the power in themselves to change their lives. In his definitive book, Your Best Life Now, he says, and that ought to be a dead giveaway since the only way this could be your best life is if you're going to hell. <laughs> he says that anyone can create by faith and words the dreams he desires. Health, wealth, happiness, success, the list is always the same. Here's some quotes from his book, Your Best Life Now. If you develop an image of success, health, abundance, joy, peace, happiness, nothing on earth will be able to hold those things from you." End quote. See, that's, that's the law of attraction that's a part of this kind of system. Here's another quote. All of us are born for earthly greatness. You were born to win. Win what? God wants you to live in abundance. You were born to be a champion. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. Before we were formed, He prepared us to live abundant lives, to be happy, healthy, and whole. 
But when our thinking becomes contaminated, it's no longer in line with God's Word." End quote. By the way, God's Word is not the Bible. God's Word is that Word that comes to us mystically, spiritually, that tells us what we should want. Here's another quote. Get your thinking positive and He will bring your desires to pass. He regards you as a strong, courageous, successful person. You're on your way to a new level of glory. Hmm. How do you get there? Believe, he says, visualize and speak out loud. Same exact approach. Words release your power. Words give life to your dreams. Here's another quote. Friend, there's a miracle in your mouth. I think Isaiah might object to that. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. Here's Joel Osteen's prayer. I thank you, Father, that I have your favor. Wow! Did he meet the Pharisee in Luke 18 or what? I thank you that I'm not like other people. Here's another quote, I know these principles are true because they work for me and my wife. Oh, so that's the test of truth. Are you kidding? I know these things are true because they work for me and my wife. Sure, you're at the top of the Ponzi scheme. And then he said, even finding a perfect parking spot at the mall. And I asked, what about the little old lady you cut off to get into that parking spot? What about her dreams? Maybe she was born to lose. I mean, it's so silly, so bizarre. He says, God has already done everything He's going to do. The ball's in your court. You have to take that part of God which exists in you and create your own reality. Now, what is the source of this? Where does this come from? Answer, Satan. This is satanic. This is satanic. This is not just off-centered. This is satanic. Why do I say that? Because health, wealth, prosperity, the fulfillment of all your dreams and your desires, that's what Satan always offers. That's called temptation based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's exactly what corrupt, fallen, unregenerate people want. That's why it works so well, right? You can go right into Satan's system, make everybody feel religious, and turn their desires, their temptations into somehow honorable desires. I mean, what did Satan say to Jesus? Grab some satisfaction. Why are you hungry? You need to eat. You need to be healthy, whole. Why would you let yourself be unpopular? Dive off the temple corner, whoo, everybody will be wowed. You'll be the winner. You'll be the champion. You'll be the Messiah. They'll hail you. And by the way, if you just look over the kingdoms of the Word, I'll give those to you too. That's satanic. And why are these false teachers so successful at what they do? Be because they're in cahoots with the devil. Why is Satan successful? Because his temptations, although they might appear noble on the outside, are in perfect accord with all the fallen, corrupt, selfish, proud, evil desires of sinners. This is a false kind of Christianity and a false view of God. And I think preachers like this who preach this stuff hate the true God. I really believe that. I believe they hate the true God and they are afraid to death that somebody might find out who He really is. Now folks, listen to me please. I told you that being prepared is no joking matter. I'm going to ask, I, I, I'm not trying to be facetious, I'm asking you to, to hear this pastor like you've never heard any preacher in your life now because many of your souls depend on it right now. Folks, it's time to take the Word of God seriously. God means what He says. But I honestly believe that God looks down on a church that's fast asleep. 
He's looking down right now at a church that is unconcerned about his soon coming. The church no longer is intimate with Christ, no longer dependent wholly on God, dependent on the Holy Spirit, but running around with schemes and plans and dreams and networking and strategizing and committee meetings, trying in the flesh and sweat, trying to make it rather than depend on God, Almighty God. The church doesn't need anything else but God Almighty on his throne. And now, for the sake of unity, compromise, in comes the gospel of prosperity and the good life. I have to stay on my knees like I did this past week, get low with God and just walk and cry and scream. Oh God, break my heart. Don't let me get addicted to the easy life. The desire for things. That's why the Lord says, don't set your heart on the things of this world. But set your heart on me, Jesus said. I will be your life. And there's a thought that says, Oh Lord, one of these days, this is all going to burn. This is not my life here, Lord. Thank you for this piece of furniture. Thank you for my car. Thank you for the finances you're supplying. But oh God, it's all going up in smoke very soon, Lord. You're my life. When you have time for friends, for family, for relatives, you have no time to dig into the Word of God. You have no time to pray and seek the face of God. And you tell me Christ is your life? But multitudes today are being saturated with your okay messages. How to make Him everything in your life so that you don't need the applause of man. You don't need to produce something. You don't have to write something. You don't have to do something. But you lean on Him, and the greatest thing that you're getting from God is revelation of who Christ is. I don't care if anyone ever hears my name again. I don't care if I ever speak to another conference. I've made up my mind with God if the rest of my life were spent nursing Gwen. I would enjoy and rejoice in the Lord. If that were my calling, that's what I would do. You see, God goes through the land. He searches every church in the nation. He searches every pastor's study. He goes through every church looking for seekers. He's looking for those who are into the Word of God, who have taken time. If we are not seeking His face, we are in no position to receive His blessings. In the United States, we're getting letters now from pastors' wives who said, I've been trying to find out why my husband has changed. He doesn't love me anymore. He's empty in the pulpit. He has no anointing. What's happened to him? And they find out. They open the door and they see their husbands watching filthy pornography. I don't want my eyes polluted. I don't want to be a part of this. I don't care who doesn't pray, I'm going to pray. I don't care who doesn't read the Bible, I'm going to read my Bible. I want nothing to do with it. And I cry, oh God, where are the voices? Where are the people that cry out against them? Where are the praying people? And I say, God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, keep me on my knees. And I was in anguish. I was in anguish four blocks from here on Broadway. Weeping and crying and wailing. I wasn't looking for a ministry. I wasn't looking to build a church. I was feeling God's pain for a lost city. He's going to show you the condition of his church. He's going to show you the condition of your own heart. And he's going to ask you a question. What is it to you? How can you tell me that you love him and you're ready to go and you neglect him day after day after day? Don't tell me you're going. You're not going. You're going to be left behind. God's promised if you will wage war against every sin, Every desire that's contrary to Christ, I'll be with you, I'll go before you. But folks, the man who really wins the battle, the man who's ready to face anything that the devil throws out of hell, is the man or woman that's been studying God when there's no crisis, when everything is well, when there seems to be blessing and prosperity. That man is diligent before God and seeks his face. A praying man is as bold as a lion. There's no demon, there's no devil in hell that'll scare him.
what God desires more than anything, and I think what blesses the heart of God in heaven is that those in their good times when all is well, they're not parked in front of a television set watching some filth. They're not foolishly laughing at some program. They are taking special loving time alone with God. They're praying for their families, building up faith for the hour of tribulation. They're seeking the face of God. And your family is in trouble. If you're not a praying man, no amount of preaching, no amount of teaching, no amount of counseling, nothing going to get through to you, nothing going to do the job until you yourself get on your face before God and lay hold of heaven. Keep us on our face. God, keep me broken. God, keep this church broken. God, don't let us sit back on a crest of blessing and get lazy and see disorder come again to this house. We don't just want crowds. We want your glory in this house, oh God. We want your glory and your power. I tremble at your word. Let us tremble this morning that it's possible for godly men and godly women who once prayed, who once had such an anointing to finally lose it this day of temptation when all hell is breaking loose. God help us determine I will seek God. I will seek God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all that's in me. That we must not forget Never forget God's grief against sin in his house and in our own lives. We will preach grace, we will preach mercy. But folks, I want you to know something. God says the day of grace is about to end. The day of grace is coming to an end. Beloved, the Lord loves his church. He loves his people with an undying love. But we are so bent on going our own way. We're so bent on drifting. We're so bent on, on, on giving up that burden of the Lord. That's why God has to keep building a fire on us. I know he has to do that in me. He has to do that in me every, every day. He has to keep stirring my heart. God says, I'm moving. I'm going to do what I promised to do in the last days, hallelujah, through the pouring out of the Holy Ghost. God is going to sanctify his church. He's going to sanctify his pulpit. Folks, God has a plan. He's working on You can't see it. I tell you, if you knew what God had in store for you, if you seek him, you'd be so rejoicing you couldn't contain yourself right now. But that's not going to happen if I don't seek him. I can abort that whole plan and end up in disaster and ruin. Right now you set your heart. Here's your prophetic word from heaven. If you seek me, you'll find me. I can't help believing in closing that there's going to be a victory march in glory. I'm so glad I'm saved. <clears throat> I love you, Jesus.